Hello, everybody. Welcome to today's Daily Devotional. I hope everybody got the memo about uh, us starting about an hour earlier. We're going to be uh, starting here at 5.30 instead of our normal 6.30. Yesterday was a little bit later. Uh, but uh, the I'm planning on, on making it out tonight and tomorrow night to the Hillside Church of Christ in Graham for their gospel meeting. Uh, for those of you who are here in Wichita Falls, I hope you're able to uh, try to make it out there as well to support them in their effort to teach the gospel. Uh, so our daily devotional today is coming from an article that was posted a couple of weeks ago, September 22nd. And the title of the article is Pennsylvania University Tells Students Action Could Be Taken If They Use Wrong Pronouns. One student told Fox News the policy forces him to go against his beliefs. A university in Pennsylvania told students that action could be taken against them if they do not respect their classmates' preferred pronouns. Point Park University's Office of Equity and Inclusion notified incoming students of its misgendering, pronoun misuse, and deadnaming policy in an email first obtained by Campus Reform. It stated that any individual who has been informed of another person's gender identity, pronouns, or chosen name is expected to respect that individual. It said action could be taken if a complaint is filed regarding the policy. While the university recognizes the aspect of intent versus impact, we must recognize that regardless of the intent, if an individual is impacted in a harmful way, action could be taken if a complaint is filed, the email states. Uh, Fox News reached out to this university for clarification on how the school planned to enforce this policy, but a spokesperson did not decline to comment. Not everyone is on board with the school's policy. Logan Dubel, 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 uh, campus reform correspondent student at VPU, told to Fox News that school's policies go against many students' belief systems, especially conservative students. Personally, I believe in the science. There are two sexes and two genders, male and female, Dubel said. The policies in question force me to go against my beliefs. The fact that I can be disciplined by failing to follow policies that violate my conscience is concerning. Therese Trump, executive director of Speech First, said that forcing students to profess beliefs against their will is inconsistent with the freedom of thought and expression the university claims to promote. The university has prioritized students' feelings over their rights and has turned some students into second-class citizens as a result, she said. All right, so we have talked before in past daily devotionals about uh, there was a situation in uh, Loudoun uh, County in uh, Virginia with a teacher who refused to go along with what the school district was telling teachers to do to uh, acknowledge a student's preferred gender and pronouns. And that teacher said, it's lying to the student. It's a sin against God uh, to make those statements. And at the time we talked about that, we mentioned the fact that these are the, this is the type of reality that we're facing, both for our teachers in our schools. Uh, certainly, I, I'm, not a, I'm not currently aware of any push for this, in uh, at least in our, our local school systems. I'm not aware of anything like that. Uh, here or, or anywhere in Texas that I know of, but this is happening in other places. Uh, certainly in the job, uh, in the in the workplace, in, in uh, certain jobs, there are certain uh, companies that have been reported uh, in different news articles as having pushing this equity and equality type of of uh, push for uh, transgender and uh, misgendering, warning against misgendering and using the wrong pronouns and all of that. I, I think that this is a, a, it's important for our young, especially our young people, certainly as adults, we can picture these types of, of policies happening in the adult world. It, at companies, as teachers and whatnot, these things are, they're, they're in our society. And they're going to spread unless certain laws are taken or, or stances, uh, stands are made. Unless something is, puts a stop to this, it's going to spread. And no matter how conservative our 
state or county or country may be at the current time, these things have a tendency of, of spreading out and becoming policy. And so we have to understand that not only as adults, but even as young people in school, whether you're a college student or otherwise, that whether it's policy, which is to say that you can be punished for disobeying that policy, or whether you're simply being encouraged to respect other students' pronouns and so forth, uh, what, how, how do we handle that? How do we deal with that? Uh, especially given the fact that we know that, yeah, the science says there are two sexes and two genders, male and female, but God says <laughs> uh, that there's two sexes and two genders as well. And regardless of what people want to call themselves, uh, it seems like people's self-identity, whatever they want to make it to be, whatever uh, uh, gender or non-gender or some amalgamation of sexual preferences a person wants to identify as, in the end, there is only male and female. In fact, I, 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 when I read articles uh, that deal with uh, uh, individuals who are transgender, in my head, I switch the pronouns to the proper sex. Uh, if it's a, a male who has been uh, who has been surgically altered to be female, and the article refers to her or she, I still read it as him or or he, uh, because I know that it's not a her. I know that it's not a she. I know it's not a woman. It's a man. And uh, certainly, Bruce Jenner is a good example of that. People, even conservative. Uh, news articles and so forth refer to him as Caitlyn Jenner, refer to him as she, when he's a he. <laughs> uh, and y y you would think that that would be, the people in our community, the people in our society view that as disrespectful. And they may even view it as homophobic, transphobic. Uh, they may view it as uh, hate, even. And yet... I don't have anything against Bruce Jenner in, in terms of, of specific, uh, well, I don't like Bruce Jenner. Uh, do I believe he's in a sinful state? Yes, but that's going to be true of, of many people in our society. It's not just because he's quote unquote transgender. There's, I mean, there, there's a lot of, of issues that uh, Bruce Jenner was involved in even before he came out as, as transgender. Um, that uh, had his his situation in his life that would not have been approved before God according to, to the scriptures. And the fact of the matter is, how we handle these situations are going to dictate future situations for us as Christians. How we, if we are willing to yield to society's pressures, and refer to men as she and her, refer to women as him or he, if we're willing to sacrifice those, they're just words. That's all it is, right? They're just words, and my society is saying, you need to respect this. Okay, you know, we can, we can respect it and still refer to them as, as that. But the fact of the matter is, words mean things. Words have meaning. And what those words represent have meaning. The moment I refer to Bruce Jenner as Caitlyn Jenner, seriously, like if I'm not just, you know, referring to Caitlyn Jenner, but I say Caitlyn Jenner and she and her, it's as if I am approving of or acknowledging the fact that, that he is actually a she. And that's not true. He is not a she. He is a he. Him's a him. And the fact that God's word teaches us that we are supposed to speak the truth. We're not supposed to speak accommodating language. And that's ultimately what this would be. If we were to yield this, while still saying that transgenderism is wrong, still saying uh, homosexuality is wrong, but we yield the language and say, okay, well, well, we'll bow to the pressures of society and refer to people by their preferred pronouns. We're not standing for the truth. We're not emphasizing the truth. And as that teacher of Loudoun County said, it would be lying to the child and it's a sin against God. And he's right. 
And the fact is that even in our school systems, I mean, I'm reading about, there's an article we'll eventually look at about a four-year-old who has come to his parents and has said that he's a tra he's transgender. A four-year-old. It, it, it just boggles the mind that I only know that some four-year-olds can't even put complete sentences together, much less understand the, the intricacies of human sexuality. It, it just it doesn't make any sense. But this is our society at this current stage. And we have to be prepared to stand up for what's right. And as a result, we have to remember what God's word has to say about standing up for what's right. In Colossians chapter 4 and in verse 5, Paul encourages the Colossians to walk in wisdom toward those who are outside, that is, outside the body of Christ, those who are not Christians, redeeming the time, realizing that you need to make the most of the time you have with people around you because you never know when a well-timed statement or well-timed example may provide guidance for people may help people to and ultimately we've talked about this before our, how our ultimate goal our ultimate purpose in this world with regard to our example is to raise the spiritual spiritual awareness of others that is our purpose our purpose isn't to save people god saves people we want to teach people about the gospel, but the only way to do that is to raise the spiritual awareness of others, to make people actually ask the questions, what is sin all about? Why should I care that Jesus came to die for me? That's raising the spiritual awareness of others. But then Paul goes on to say in verse 6, Let your speech always be with grace, seasoned with salt, that you may know how you ought to answer each one. Salt is, has a preserving element to it. Let your, your speech be seasoned with salt. Let your speech be one that preserves, that uh, enhances. And the idea of let your speech always be with grace, what, is, what does that mean in the in context of, of our speech? Well, the term grace, it means favor, whether it's God's favor or that which is favorable. But as defined by God, let your speech always have grace, which is to say, let it always be favorable. Let it always carry with it the uh, the the characteristics that God would want it to have. That being the case, I cannot refer to Bruce Jenner as a her or a she and still think of my speech as being with grace. This isn't just have your speech be with grace into the people who hear you. So, therefore, use accommodating speech, you know, don't, uh, don't say things that would offend them and that sort of thing. Listen, God's word, the truth of God's word is going to offend people on its own. That's just, those are facts. Jesus himself acknowledged that that was part of his purpose. <laughs> he came to not bring peace but a sword. And he, he knew that what he brought, the teaching that he brought, was going to set people against one another. Because the people who don't want to hear the truth are not going to like the people who do want to hear and practice the truth. And so our speech being with grace isn't just grace as defined by our society. Otherwise, there's a lot of things we need to change about how we talk. Rather, it's our speech having the characteristics that God would want it to have. Being a preserving, preserving how? Preserving of our friendship? Preserving of our relationships? No, preserving for the soul. That you may know how you ought to answer each one. And this goes back to what Peter says uh, in 1 Peter chapter 3 and in verse 15, when Peter says, Sanctify the Lord God in your hearts and always be ready to give a defense to everyone who asks you a reason for the hope that is in you with meekness and fear. We, we can't give a defense for the gospel to, to defend God's word if we're accommodating sinful elements by the way we speak. If we're, in essence, approving of, even though we would claim, no, I don't believe in transgenderism, I believe it's wrong, and yet we're supporting it by what we say, the pronouns that we use. The last scripture I want to use uh, or go to this afternoon is Titus chapter 2. In Titus chapter 2, Paul 
opens this up to include Titus. He says, likewise, exhort the young men to be sober-minded, but then he includes Titus here in verse 7, and all things showing yourself, not themselves. <laughs> Paul's including Titus in this, and all things showing yourself to be a pattern of good works. In doc so, so showing a consistency, a pattern, having regular uh, interactions that would be applied to good works as God has defined them. And, and so then Paul kind of describes some of these good works in doctrine, that is teaching, showing integrity, not willing to yield even for a moment, as Paul would say in Galatians chapter 2 regarding uh, the Gentiles, uh, the teaching of the Gentiles need to be circumcised and then be baptized. Uh, Paul kind of is recounting the events of Acts 15 in Galatians chapter 2. He says, we didn't yield even for a moment because that's not the truth. And doctrine showing integrity, reverence, incorruptibility, verse 8, sound speech that cannot be condemned, that one who is an opponent may be ashamed, having nothing evil to say of you. Some uh, apply sound speech just to the teaching. And that's true. Sure, sound speech, should it should be sound according to the teaching. But Paul already deals with sound speech according to teaching. In doctrine showing integrity, reverence, and incorruptibility. Well, that, that right there is sound speech, according to the teaching. But then Paul opens it up beyond just teaching. Sound speech that cannot be condemned, that one who is an opponent may be. What opponent? Who are our opponents? Those who are standing against the truth? Those who are standing in favor of sin? And so in verse 8, when he says sound speech that cannot be condemned, that one who is an opponent may be ashamed, having nothing evil. Well, our, these opponents aren't just going to be looking at what we're teaching. They're going to be looking at our daily lives. They're going to be looking at our, our consistency, whether we're, in their minds, hypocrites or not. And the things that we say and how we go about saying them can either condemn us, certainly before God, or justify us. And with others, they can condemn us or justify us. And the fact that because some people are going to try to some people try to twist this and say, well, obviously we should be willing to accommodate what society want, how we should speak in society. But Paul is using this term sound speech. This is grounded, having a foundation. It's certainly associated with that which is that which God has taught, but it's that which is proved by God, not just in what we teach by word how we speak to others in our daily conversations. Sound speech that cannot be condemned. By whom? Well, the goal here is not to say anything that somebody can latch onto and call you a hypocrite. Isn't that exactly what would happen if we refer to uh, transgender individuals by their preferred pronouns and yet still says, well, transgender is wrong, uh, trans transgenderism or homosexuality is wrong, it's sinful? Uh, you're kind of sending two different messages there. And so we have to stand for the truth. We have to stand for what's right. And we have to be prepared and we have to prepare our kids for the reality of this society, unfortunately, that uh, college students are facing. Uh, certainly this Pennsylvania University is uh, promoting this. But even in our elementary schools, in our middle schools and our high schools, whether it's policy or it's simply being told to our young people, this is how you should treat people. These are, are dangerous times. And are we going to be willing to stand for the truth? Are we willing to be to, to stand and, and maybe be shunned? Maybe be considered uh, a homophobe or a transphobe or maybe be considered as one who spews hate? Are we willing to do that? even though we don't hate, even though we aren't afraid of uh, homosexuality or those who are guilty of homosexuality or transgenderism, are we willing to stand for the truth and in love still speak the truth? We have to ask ourselves that question. We have to, to consider what our responses would be if we faced a situation like this. Would we stand for our beliefs in God's word or would we yield and accommodate what society wants us to do? That's the daily devotional for you today. Something to think about. Our next daily devotional will be tomorrow, Friday, at, again, 5.30, uh, an hour earlier than normal. Uh, so I hope to see you all then. Thanks for the time.